The Witchcrafter archetype, known simply in the Japanese as Witchcraft, are a series of both female spellcaster type monsters of a variety of different attributes and levels, as well as a variety of accompanying spell cards. The Witchcrafters were first introduced in the 2019 OCG and TCG packs Infinity Chasers, where Madame Vare and her very smug face appears as one of the cover monsters. <laughs> <laughs> Further Witchcrafter support would later arrive in Ignition Assault and Eternity Code. The Witchcrafter's English and Japanese name is a play on the word witchcraft, which was a term used to those who practice magic through incantations and spells. The fun with the name is that if you split the word in half, you get witch and craft. Fitting, as all the monsters are witches who appear to be crafting something unique to their trade. Interestingly, according to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Guidebook, the Witchcrafters were a guild who practiced their trade in the back alleys of the magical citadel of Enmion. There, they would infuse magic into items to create unique and powerful weapons. Sometimes, more than one Witchcrafter would come together for a collaboration, and this is where they would truly shine, as together they could create something that they could not do alone. Being the talk of the town, in order for admirers to recognise their work, they developed a logo, which was a crossed pair of scissors and hammer adorned in front of calipers. As word of their talent spread, they began to be employed by the Enmion sorcerers to develop new weapons and items for them. In fact, some of the witchcrafters would even join their forces but we'll get to that a little bit later. A Witchcrafter deck's playstyle is all about getting the monsters on the field with the spells in hand to activate their powers. For you see, each of the monsters shares an archetypal quick effect that always requires the cost of a spell card from in hand in order to be used. This could be something like discarding a spell to destroy a card on the field, or revealing a number of spells to boost a monster's attack by the results. After hearing all this, you might think that the deck seems like a absolute resource devourer. However, that's where the second archetypal gimmick of the deck comes into place. For you see, all of the spell cards have the ability to be returned back to the hand from the grave during the end phase, as long as there is a witchcrafter on the field. The catch is, however, every one of the spells is a hard once per turn meaning you can't use its one effect and then get it back during the same end phase. You either need to use it only as a cost and get it straight back, or use its unique effect and then wait till the next end phase in order to get it back. So now we know a little bit more about the archetype, how about we take a look at each of the witchcrafters, see what they can do and what their names and designs are inspired by. Let's start first with... Witchcrafter Pottery. Her effect is, during the main phase, quick effect, you contribute this card, then discard one spell, special summon one Witchcrafter monster from your deck, except Witchcrafter Pottery. For the sake of brevity, all Witchcrafter monsters under the level 5 have this ability, so I'm going to stop reading them out from this point, but just assume they have them when we get to them anyway. Her unique effect is, if you have no cards in your hand, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one Witchcrafter card in your graveyard, add it to your hand. You can only use each effect of Witchcrafter Pottery once per turn. And again, this hard once per turn clarification is on all of the Witchcrafter monsters, so I won't read this out for the rest of them. Pottery's name is derived from the French word for pottery. She is named so as she crafts clay and imbues it with magic to bring them to life. However, despite her professional looking work area, perhaps due to her age, the creations she shapes take on a childlike design and seem almost incomplete based on the expression of pottery herself. That is, of course, until you realise that one of the greatest things about the Witchcrafters is when they come together and collaborate to make something they could not have done on their own. For this monster, what she lacked was shown in Witchcrafter creation. As we can see, all she needed was a little bit of paint to complete her work, and it was all thanks to the help of Witchcrafter Pitor. Her unique effect is you can banish this card from your graveyard, draw one card, then send one Witchcrafter card from your hand to the graveyard, or or, if you have none, banish your entire hand. Pittor's name is derived from the Italian word for painter. She is named so as she develops and uses different colours of paint. The reason why the Italian word for painter was probably used is because of Italy's high abundance for fantastic works of art. Witchcrafter Jenny, known in the Japanese as Witchcraft Genie. 
Her unique effect is you can banish this card and one witchcrafter spell from your graveyard. This effect becomes that spell's effect when that card is activated. Jenny's name, which might actually be Genny. If we've got any French speakers out there, then pl please let me know because it is derived from the French word for genius. She is named so as she is the intellectual of the witchcrafter group, being able to formulate new and creative inventions through study. She jots down her new ideas and locks them away for her witchcrafter comrades to make into a reality. A possible example of her contributions could be the spell counter power stones that many magicians use today. Jenny's ingenuity was involved in the collaboration with Vere and Hain in order to build the witchcrafter's ultimate creation, Golem Aruru. Not only that though, but Jenny also served as a fighter for the Enmion forces, seemingly later on in her life. This is shown in the artwork of Servant of Enmion. Evidence to support that the two are the same are the fact that they both have identical attributes, types and appearances. As well, Servant has exactly three times the values of Jenny's attack, defense and level. Also, spell counters can be seen all over her body further cementing the relation and her creation of spell counters. Also, Jenny was censored for her international release by having her hip covered up as well as her breast size significantly reduced. Witchcrafter Schmietta. Her effect is you can banish this card from your graveyard, send one Witchcrafter card from your deck to the graveyard, except Witchcrafter Schmietta. Schmietta's name is derived from the German word for blacksmith. She's named so as she works in a forge to create unique weapons. In fact, she has collaborated with the head of the witchcrafters, Vierre, in order to combine her metal work and glass together to make something completely new. Unfortunately, Schmetta did receive some censorship for her international release, as she had her top's length increased in order to hide the monster's slightly exposed bra. Witchcrafter Edel. Her effect is quick effect. You can discard one spell, special summon one witchcrafter monster from your hand, except witchcrafter Edel. You can tribute this card and target one spellcaster monster in your graveyard, except witchcrafter Edel. Special summon it. Adele's name is derived from the Dutch word for gemstone. She is named so as she creates precious jewelry through the rare materials, going so far as to adorn her entire self in them too. She wields a giant caliper as her crafting weapon. And fun fact, if you look around Adele's studio, you can see a variety of different jewelries. But do any of them look familiar? Well, they should because she was the one who created the black pendant, as seen here. Witchcrafter Hain. Her effect is your opponent cannot target other spellcaster monsters you control with card effects. Quick effect, you can discard one spell and target one face-up card your opponent controls, destroy it. Hain's name is derived from the Romanian word for clothing. She is named so as she is shown to be a seamstress that creates clothing using her sewing needles that are connected to her magically imbued tailor shears. Hain was involved in the collaboration to create Golem Aruru as shown in Masterpiece. She was the one to specifically imbue the clothes to adorn her as shown in draping and finally she was there for the unveiling in well uh, the unveiling spell card. Hain was also censored for her international release as she had her exposed cleavage covered up. Witchcrafter Madame Ver. Her effect is during damage calculation if your spellcaster monster battles an opponent's monster. Quick effect you can reveal any number of spells with different names in your hand and if you do your battling monster gains 1000 attack and defense for each card revealed until the end of this turn quick effect, you can discard one spell, negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls, until the end of this turn. The leader of the witchcrafters, Vere's name is derived from the French word for glass, named so as she is a glass blower, someone who works with and manipulates glass. She is the one who most likely orchestrated the creation of the deck's most powerful monster, witchcrafter Golem Aruru. Aurora's effect is when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a spellcaster monster you control or targets it for an attack. Quick effect, you can target one card your opponent controls or one witchcrafter spell in your graveyard. Special summon this card from your hand and if you do, return the targeted card to the hand. You can only use this effect of witchcrafter golem Aruru once per turn. Once per turn, during your opponent's standby phase, return this card to the hand. This monster is an amalgamation of all the talents of the witchcrafters come together. She is their ultimate weapon. You can even see the physical aspects that each of the witchcrafters have imbued in the monster's design. So with that, that's all the monsters. Let's take a quick look at all of the spells and traps next. 
Witchcrafter by Streets. The first time each Witchcrafter monster you control will be destroyed each turn by battle or card effect. It is not destroyed. You can only use one of the following effects of Witchcrafter by Street per turn, and only once that turn. If a Witchcrafter monster you control would discard to activate an effect, you can send this card from your field to the graveyard instead. During your end phase, if you control a Witchcrafter monster while this card is in your graveyard, you can place this card face up in your spell and trap zone. I would just like to quickly mention that this card's artwork shows each of the Witchcrafter's shops. All six of them can be seen on the streets. However, there appears to be a seventh shop. And since there are only six Witchcrafters, not including Golem, as that is a creation rather than a creator, this could imply that another Witchcrafter monster could be on the way. And if I can make an educated guess on it, I would guess it is a level 6 monster too, as the archetype doesn't have a level 6, but it does have levels 1 to 8. Witchcrafter Collaboration. Target one Witchcrafter monster you control, it can make a second attack during each battle phase this turn. Also, if it attacks this turn, your opponent can activate spells or trap cards until the end of the damage step. During your end phase, if you control a Witchcrafter monster while this card is in your graveyard, you can add this card to your hand. You can only use one Witchcrafter Collaboration effect per turn and only once that turn. All the rest of the spells are going to be able to add themselves back from the graveyard and have a hard once per turn, so we're going to stop mentioning that now, but... Witchcrafter Creation. Add one Witchcrafter monster from your deck to your hand. Witchcrafter Draping. Target spells slash traps your opponent controls up to the number of Witchcrafter monsters you control. Return those targeted cards to the hand. Witchcrafter Holiday, known in the Japanese as Witchcraft Sabotage. Target one Witchcrafter monster in your graveyard, special summon it. Fun fact about this card, by the way. While Madame Vare never had her artwork censored, this card does, as Madame Vare is seen sleeping in the Japanese version with drool around her mouth. In the international version, the drool is completely removed. Okay. Witchcrafter Scroll. Once per turn, when your spellcaster monster destroys a monster by battle, you can draw one card. You can only use one of the following effects of Witchcrafter Scroll per turn, and only once that turn. If a Witchcrafter monster you control would discard to activate an effect, you can send this card from your field to the graveyard instead. During your end phase, if you control a Witchcrafter monster while this card is in your graveyard, you can place this card face up in your spell and trap zone. Witchcrafter Unveiling. Known in the Japanese as Witchcraft Demonstration. Special summon one Witchcrafter monster from your hand, and if you do, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to the activation of your Spellcaster monster's effects for the rest of this turn. Witchcrafter Masterpiece. If you control a Witchcrafter monster, target one spell in either graveyard, add one card with the same name from your deck to your hand. During either player's turn, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card and any number of spells from your graveyard. Special summon one Witchcrafter monster from your deck whose levels equals the number of spells banished to activate this effect. I'm going to use each effect of Witchcrafter Masterpiece once per turn. Witchcrafter Patronus. You can target one of your spellcaster monsters that is banished or in your graveyard, shuffle it into the deck. And if you do, add one Witchcrafter spell from your deck to your hand. If this card is in your graveyard, except the turn it was sent there, you can banish this card. Then target any number of your banished Witchcrafter spells with different names, add them to your hand. You can only use each effect of Witchcrafter Patronus once per turn. And with that guys, that is the Witchcrafter Archetype done let me know what you think of them in the comment section below have you ever played them do you think they're a competitive deck or just a fun deck to play i would just like to quickly say that my favorite artwork out of all these cards is witchcrafter draping i don't know why i just think it looks really really nice but yeah guys before we go i want to give a huge shout out to the people that help make these videos possible and i owe it all to them thank you first and foremost to my platinum backers that give just that little bit extra and it always means a lot nemochan77 thank you very much as well to all my other patreon backers and my youtube supporters silver defender michael wakloski stefan pole goosey q Yu-Gi-Oh! everything yokaido kenya and riaz gremory thank you very much as well to everybody else supporting me i do appreciate it a lot guys catch you all later see you next time